This episode of The Minimalist is brought to you by nobody. Because advertisements suck. <laughs> this podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists. Who the hell wants to be famous? Oh, man. Apparently everyone. Well, what? there's nothing wrong with being well-known for creating something meaningful. It seems like influencers think that being famous is the point, rather than the byproduct. Today, we're speaking with Nick Bilton, director of the new HBO documentary, Fake Famous, mm. as well as Chris Bailey, one of the film's stars, about the perils of pursuing fame, clout, and attention in today's Insta world. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for being here, y'all. That's good. I gotta tell you, man, I felt like I wasn't watching a documentary when I watched this. I felt like I was witnessing something. Mm. You are. Yeah. <laughs> you are. You are definitely. Yeah, it's uh <clears throat> it's well we didn't know what was going to happen when we started the whole thing. So uh should we tell the listeners the, let's, let's the talk premise? About the film, yeah. yeah. The premise. Well, why make a film about fake fame? So I had uh I'd been a reporter at the New York Times for 15 years and then went to Vanity Fair as a reporter there and Graydon Carter who was my editor at the time was also doing some documentaries for HBO and he had approached me and uh, he said, oh, you know, we should do a, a doc on uh, influencer culture and how powerful it is. And I, and I said, it's, it's bullshit. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, I could make an influencer in 10 minutes. And he said, well, that's a great film. Mm. And, <clears throat> and then I had to actually try to figure out how to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and so we, uh, what we did is I, I teamed up with uh, this producer, Annabelle Dunn, who's done a bunch of films before. And, and we, we held a casting call uh, in LA. We, we actually kind of wanted to copy the flash dance you know, vibe. Um, and we, we literally just put out an email uh, to some casting sites and said, do you want to be famous? Mm. And if you do show up at this place, the only requirement was that you had, you know, a thousand followers or less. Uh, mm. We didn't want anyone that had a, a large following. We had 5,000 people respond in 24 hours. Uh, and we narrowed it down to a few, <laughs> a few hundred that showed up. And then we narrowed that down to, we were originally going to do two people and we ended up doing three and one of whom is Chris Bailey sitting right here. <laughs> <clears throat> and, um, and they all had around a thousand followers each. And then I started to buy them fake likes and fake comments and fake followers. And we started to do fake photo shoots all with the goal of making them to be perceived as being famous to yes. see how their lives would change. Mm. And, uh, Sounds a little bit reality TV, but it was reality TV meets documentary meets, you know, kind of a social experiment. Yeah. So, yeah. It was quite the experiment. And I noticed, Chris, the reason I wanted you to be here today is <clears throat> you really stood out among everyone there. There are a few reasons. Um, they were asking you during the sort of casting call, how many, how many followers you have? You're mm -hmm. the only person <clears throat> that said, I don't know how many followers <laughs> I have. And then the other thing that he stood out about him was when we asked everyone, do you want to be famous? Uh huh. Uh, um, and, um, and people had these like bullshit answers. They were like, yes, so I can make the world a better place. And <laughs> yes, so I can change the world for, <laughs> and, and, and solve world peace and, and world hunger. And Chris said, I still remember this. He said, I don't want to be famous. And we all stood there. We were like, what did he say? And he goes, I, I deserve to be famous. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> and it was like, whoa, that was a refreshing answer. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Because I've seen everybody freeze in the room. Yeah, we <laughs> were. It was great. I mean, it was a cool answer. It was like, a, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. An honest yeah. answer. Yeah. yeah. I feel like out of the three main uh, participants in this experiment, like, I feel like you, Chris, were probably the most genuine. And I, I won't, I'll try to not give the whole documentary away. But I just remember a certain point in the documentary, you were like, yeah, I don't, I don't want these fake comments. Like I want people to like me from me, <laughs> yeah. not because of this, this BS that we're kind of putting out there. And yeah, I really admired that, man. My favorite line in the film was, was one of Chris's when you said, uh, I wrote it down here. I'd rather be broke and real than rich and fake. Yeah. And, That's and, right. and yeah. so talk a little bit about that because there was, I mean, the whole idea of this was like, let's make you famous. But what Nick, what you did was sort of bring out the absurdity, the fakeness in fame in general. Now, there are sort of two types of fame. There's this fake famous. There's the aggregating eyeballs, getting attention, attention seeking, right? But then there's this other thing where, where it is you know, you're well known for doing something well. And it seems to me, 
Chris, what you wanted to do is the reason you wanted quote unquote fame is because of your talents, not just because you wanted more attention. That's right. Yeah. Um, I just think like, like right now, especially uh, a lot of consumers confuse fame and ability and mm. talent, mm. you know, because they don't know how to differentiate between the two. And when people think about fame, the first thing that people think about besides having a platform is being rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But your life can be rich without having all of that. Mm. Being famous comes with a lot of bullshit. Yeah. So, um, you know, luckily I've been blessed in life to see a lot, a lot of things that a lot of people wish they could see, but I've gotten to be around it and I understand everything that all the consequences of like really being a famous person, like if you want to be famous for a good reason, you know, do you have like a message for people? Like what's the point? Right. You know, and, and some people think that fame is the point. And, and I noticed that in all of the sort of the, the casting call that you did, Nick, there, there was this, uh, you know, you even had this scene where everyone said, I'm a, I'm a model and an actor. I'm a model <laughs> yeah, and an actor. Yeah, yeah. I'm a model. Like, it just kept popping an up. Actor over. And a model. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and so what is it? it? Because to me, and I think to many people, we are simultaneously attracted to that, but we're also like turned off by the, the vapidity of the whole thing. Mm. Well, I think fame itself has 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 been destroyed by, you know, fame is a construct of the of media. It's a, it is a result of screens and squares and that are everywhere. And I think back in in the in the twenties, it served a purpose. There were people who were truly talented for being behind a camera and. Uh, and for singing or whatever it was that they did. And there was only, you know, back, if you if you go back to the 1920s, there was a couple of hundred, fam like, A-list famous people. Mm, there were, yeah. you know, uh, and and I think that, and and even if you fast forward to today, there's only a few thousand people who are legitimately famous because of some sort of television talent or, or basketball or whatever it is. And I think what happened as a result of social media is, it, it, well, first reality TV came along where you could just be famous for no reason. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and it's the fakest of all fakeness. Mm -hmm. uh, and then along comes social media where you could be famous for that number, which was what we were trying to kind of point out in the film. And and I think that the, the problem is, is that, you know, there are th millions of people with hundreds of thousands of followers mm -hmm that no one knows who they are. They're not right. famous, they're just people, you know, what was really interesting is, is one of the people in the film, Dominique, who we got to, we ended up getting her to around 350,000 followers. People would like look at her social media and they'd be like, are you famous? Right. And the fact that you have to ask that question mm. is just so ridiculous. Yeah. Like you should know if the person, if you know the person, if you don't. And, um, and I think that, you know, What's, what was really interesting was we had these three different people who all took three different routes. You know, Dom was like, I, I'm gonna ride this to the to the moon. Mm -hmm. And Wiley, who I'll save that story, you can watch it on the film. But, right. and then Chris, who was like, I, I don't want this. Uh -huh. uh, and- um, You were a little frustrated by that at first. At first I was because I, because we <laughs> wanted to do some of the shoots and things like that. <laughs> but, but then I like, I got to a point where I was like, I actually respect it. Like, it's like, you know, I think, I do. I think it's a harder journey, absolutely, but I think it's the more noble one. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think like it's, uh, um, and I think you know, there's there's no right or wrong version of it. I think what what was frustrating to me was realizing the impact that um, that social media has had on kids today. You know, the studies that show eighty seven percent of mm. kids want to be famous more than anything else on the planet, like wow. more than anything. And this is the longitudinal study that was done at UCLA where they looked at kids who were in there, um, you know, back in the 1960s and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the kids were like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a, a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, a bus driver, you know? And then by the eighties it was, I want to be a basketball player. I want to be a musician. Now it's, I just want to be famous. Right, insta famous, and that's it. And, well, what you know. is it about that attention that is so enticing? The the, the attention of other people that we don't even I think know. It's like what Chris said. It's like it's like this bullshit belief that oh, fame equals happiness and money and so on, and it's just not true. I mean, every 
look at like look at the billionaires that that just in the past, you know, John McAfee this week committed suicide mm -hmm. in jail um, because and he was worth hundreds of millions of dollars because he was about to be extradited. You know, Jeff Bezos it has gone through such a midlife crisis that he divorced his wife and, and five left, his, you know, his five kids is now going to risk his life to go on a rocket ship so he can beat Elon Musk <laughs> to get to space. Elon Musk has been divorced three times mm. and is look at his Twitter feed, you can see how completely fucked up he is. Bill Gates just got divorced. Like, there's this bullshit ideal that you think, oh, I have money and fame, I'm gonna be happy. These people are fucking miserable. Yeah. They're yeah. miserable. Mm. And it, I think it, you know, it's that this, it starts there and it goes all the way down to these people on social media. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I think it's interesting because when I, like, I don't crave to be famous. I mean, we have some kind of, you know, some type of notoriety, notoriety because we have documentaries on Netflix and every once in a blue moon, someone will stop me and, oh, hey, you're that guy from the minimalism documentary. But for me, it's like, if you're doing good work, if you are an actually talented person, like that's what comes first. And then the fame is kind of a result. It's a byproduct of, of hard work and of talent where, yeah, having that goal of being famous. Well, what did Rogan say? He said, uh, Rich and famous people are the most miserable people on the planet, and everyone's trying to be one of them. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, true. it's yeah. completely true. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's and and I think that you know when you when you look at the film and everyone, all the people that wanted to be in it and so on, uh, it just showed how many people are trying. They think that that's their yeah. goal to, to 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 happiness. And I think what's interesting about Chris was, I mean, there was one thing that was interesting. So we were doing these fake photo shoots. And Chris was like, come and film me silk screening. Yeah. And, and it was like, I was like, that's not the point. But at the same time, like for him, that was the point. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it's like, and you're like, you didn't you sell every, did everything sell out when the film came out or something like that? All the yeah. one-off stuff? Whole website. It's great. That's awesome. It's awesome. Man. It's that like, cool. I think that's the, you know, yeah. it, that must have been a yeah more fun experience than getting a thousand fake followers exactly yeah i didn't need the followers they don't have any i don't need fake followers they have no money <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they can't buy shit. Like, yeah. what do i need them for they're not actually going to support me it's just an illusion to make you think that more yeah. people it's, that's what's enticing has the any the attention the, has yeah. any of your has you has have any of your habits changed as a result of the film or anything like that have you like do you use instagram less or do you take it less seriously oh, or man. well since we're on that topic and we're with the minimalists i just bought this thing that is, <laughs> i think i think it's a it's a minimalist uh purchase okay uh okay. i don't know if you guys are hip to it it's called a light phone Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah the absolutely. Light phone. I have, yes. So yeah, that's you're answering awesome. your question is okay. I'm getting to the point now where I don't like the fact that people feel like they can just like access me at any time. Mm -hmm. Like, let me just send this motherfucker a DM and see if he's gonna just <laughs> respond and like. Wait, do you have the to, light phone with you? No, uh, I, I'm waiting. It. It's okay. like late June or something. Well, yeah. it should be coming any day now. But um, I was. I don't know. Somehow, you know, the phone be listening to you. And I was probably complaining to one of my boys like, dude, I'm sick of this shit. Mm -hmm. And the phone starts showing me this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Because I'm like, oh, it don't have like all these apps and all this dumb stuff. Like yeah. I could just get on the phone, talk to who I want to talk to, listen to music and leave me the hell alone. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's what I like, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. And um. So yeah, my habits have changed because I'm a little bit, I'm trying to like preserve like the privacy that I have right now while I can, because I know that it's just like, it's rolling momentum, it's growing and people become more interested and more interested over time, the more things that I do. But I'm like, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm a private person. I'm not going to, you're not going to know all my business no mm. matter what. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So do you use Instagram less? I'm trying to use Instagram less and less every day. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard. You know? Are you guys on Instagram? Yeah. 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 We have someone it? who manages it, though. But yeah. do you guys, I, I, you know, sit in bed at night and scroll through no. those oh, squares? Oh, no, I don't. No. I don't sleep with the phone in the room. Yeah. Right. I put it in a different room. Um, yeah, I don't have yeah. the app on my phone. I, I think that's the, I mean, but the, the, that, and all of a sudden that takes it out of your world, right? Not yeah. having social media on your phone takes it out of your world. What's mm -hmm. been really interesting for me is, so I, I wrote a book on Twitter in 2013 
about like the rise of the company and all the backstabbing and infighting and hi- and Twitter has been I've been on it since essentially day one mm. and I got to a point recently well I've, I've always had been to the point where I just uh, love and hate it and I got to a point where I hated it more than I loved it and I mm. deleted it from my phone and don't really check it anymore. Right. I don't miss it in the slightest. Yeah. yeah I literally either. don't miss it in the slightest. Isn't that yeah. on it all the time? Yeah. You feel like you need it <laughs> and then you remove it and you mm, realize yeah. how not only do you not need it, but mm. part of it was making you miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Because I felt like on a, like an app like that, I like, I'm just talking to myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm wasting all the gems that are inside of my mind. And then I'm like, these people don't even deserve this. And I need to figure out how to express this in a more constructive way than to type it on a computer mm. where I only have like 140 characters. It's limiting me anyway. Mm. So like, right. I was like, yeah, Twitter is pointless, you know, but everybody, all my friends were like, dude, you need to get back on Twitter now. Uh, mm. Because like, I was talking real shit on Twitter, but <laughs> I was, like I said, I didn't feel like anybody was listening or like reading yeah. it or, you know, like. It's a lot of noise yeah. and it's See, hard I, to break I, through that noise. I have, yeah. a, I have the opposite problem where people are paying attention to what I yeah. say and then berating me for like. Because if that's your profession. Anything, yeah. anything, you know. writing your ideas. Like I wrote a, a piece this week about this space race between Bezos and, and Musk and like all these like. Musk sycophants came on Twitter because I somebody had sent me a couple of the tweets and I was laughing at it, but yeah. they were like defending Elon. Musk. I'm like, he's the richest guy in the world. Like, you don't need to fucking defend him. Right. Like, <laughs> get yeah. a life. Get a fucking life. Yeah. I, I look at social media like it's a fake world. It's like we are allowed to curse on here, right? Yeah. Sorry. Or podcast channel bleep it out. But either way, yeah, you feel free to talk freely. But you know, in, uh, like Twitter, for example, all the trolls on Twitter. Like they would never. Oh, they would never to your face. They would never talk like I have that. A, I have an like, interesting it, story about this. It is such a fake world. Go for it. So I was covering a trial when I was at the New York Times. I was covering a trial in New York, and when we, you're in the courtroom, you don't have access to your phone, and the journalists are all all squished off to a side. And I was sitting with a woman. I won't mention her name, but um, and she was lovely. Just we spent three weeks together, uh, and um. And at the end of it, I flew back to L.A. And and there was a few people I had, like, become friendly with at lunch and coffees and whatever in the in the courthouse. So I didn't have my phone. And I was like, oh, let me go follow all these people. So I'd start following them all. And this one woman uh, had, had blocked me. And I'd spent three weeks with her. It was like, it would be like, it'd be like, I was hanging out for three weeks. And then I go to follow you. And I realized you blocked me on social media. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? And so I grabbed my wife's phone. I looked up her account and I was like, well, my wife's not blocked. And so I searched my name on there mm-hmm. and all she had done had spent uh, like weeks berating me, calling me every name under the sun, oh. but had sat next to me like my best friend. Yeah. And it's like oh in person, God. It's, I mean, it was like the ultimate fakeness. That's exactly. And that is what social media is, in my opinion. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, it's, it is. It's a, it's a fake world. In fact, like with Facebook, I got off of Facebook back in 2016. Smart. Because what I realized was, A, it's a fake world. Like, people don't actually talk in real life the way they talk on Facebook. Uh, but on, on, on its best day, Facebook pacified me. Like yeah. it was, it was entertaining on its, on the worst day, it would ruin my day. And I had a lot more worse days than best days. So yeah, I got rid of it, but yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. That's crazy. Cause she wouldn't block you in real life. No, she's yeah. completely nice to me in real yeah. life, yeah. but on, on social media, she had that superpower. Man. Yeah. I, I've, I've had a lot of people that, that things like that have happened, but yeah. I'm all for blocking people, especially blocking sure. people in real life though. Like, like <laughs> it, it, right. Removing people from my life who are toxic. Right. Right. And, and, and but I so, feel, I feel like that's the case with social media. I like mm-hmm. feel like it's that there's like a, a, a tech guru. Uh, I know who once said to me, um, that technology makes the world 51% better and 49% worse. And because we get that extra one or 2%, it's worth it. Yeah. I think with social media, it's the other way around. Right. I think it makes the world at least 51% worse and 49% better. Yeah. And as a result, I don't want anything really to do with it. And it's like, you and, and the algorithm is so good that it's not like, he figured out what he wanted, a light phone, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, and that you can't beat the algorithm. And the only way to beat it is to not play the game, it's not participate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard a story about the, the algorithm figuring out when someone was pregnant and sending them a bunch of uh, yeah, direct Pre- mailers. Yeah. And so their family found out she was pregnant before 
that she even announced it to the family. Yeah. Well, what's there's an interesting thing. So Chris had just said that he had mentioned that he was getting fed up with his phone, and then he started to see these ads. So a lot of people think that the ads are a result because your phone's listening to you. It's mm. actually more terrifying than that. Mm. <laughs> True, it really is. So the <laughs> reason that they you. know is because the the data and the algorithms see patterns of people who start to do certain things and right. like things differently or less or leave comments or more or search certain things on social media or, mm -hmm. or on, on Google and so on. And the, the data can figure out, oh, this person's getting a little fed up with their phone. Uh, we're going to serve them up this ad right here. Mm. And so that's how it knows, which is even more terrifying because it's not listening to you. It just knows every single solitary detail about you. It's how good the algorithm that's is. That's how good the algorithm is. Yeah. Are. Wow. That's it's unbelievable. Crazy. Well, this is a listener driven show on the maximal. Chris, I do want to talk to you about the one off project and a bunch of other stuff. But right now, let's get into some questions. We have someone from Instagram who asks <laughs> a question. It's fake. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, this is a uh, Libby. Why do the people who just post photos of themselves in skimpy outfits and pouts <laughs> get 5 million followers, yet the people who actually have something meaningful to say get only a handful of followers? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pouting enough on Instagram, am I? You're not wearing the yoga pants. <laughs> I bought the yoga pants for you just so we can get up our Instagram follower account. Oh my God. Yeah, guys, uh, you, there's something fascinating in this question because there is a, a sort of moralizing in it as well. It, it, it assumes that like the skimpy outfits are immoral or bad or whatever, but um, while it might be empty or even tacky, um, clearly it's what a lot of people want well but the the reason is because the entire internet is a dating website like that's it every yeah. aspect of it you think like you know bumble or whatever is is are the dating i no, it's facebook it's instagram it's yeah. this that and the other and of course sex sells like that's you know i mean i don't know chris what do you think Think people like looking at ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean it's true. <laughs> you, know? you can't you can't deny people it. Like looking at ass, so they show ass and people like. And they get the likes and they get the followers. Right. It, mm. it, just because something is enticing and it attracts eyeballs onto it. a car crash also attracts eyeballs onto. Well, what's it. interesting is I. It, it's funny you bring this up because I was. Um, when we were doing a bunch of research for the doc, we were looking for we were looking for influencer accounts so we could emulate them and copy them. And if you go look at any of these bikini clad um, accounts, whether it's men or women, there will be one photo of a sunset or a cappuccino or a chair on mm. the beach or something where they where they took the picture because it was there. They felt artistic at the time and they wanted to express this picture. And the bikini photos get a million likes and that chair picture or that that sunset gets like a hundred. Yeah. And it's like, and yeah. you can tell they're trying and they're not going to delete it. And it's, and it's, but I also think like part of, part of me thinks like, well, you should do more of that and say, screw you to the people that are only going to like the naked pictures of you. Mm. And like, force them to look at some of the things that you want to document that you see as artistic. Yeah. 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 It's unfortunate that a lot of people, influencers specifically, yeah, what drives their photos, it's the likes. So they're catering to their audience rather than catering to themselves. Completely. Yeah. Chris, what have yeah. you seen? What are some of the most obnoxious things you've seen people do on Instagram or social media to attract attention or fame? What makes you cringe? Oh, man, I hate when people go in public places and do things for the gram. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really, I don't like that shit at all. Like, um, okay, so I have an example. I was recently in New York City, and I went over there to see um, Cause Show. It's called What Party? It's at Brooklyn Art Museum. Um, anyway, I've been a big fan of him for a long time a lot of my life um, as an artist. So anyway, to see this big presentation is crazy because he has all these like statues and they have like all these emotions. And a lot of them are like, they, some of them look like they're crying and some of them are like sitting down in like these certain poses. And this is like the, uh, this is like the, the, what everybody knows him for. These like, they're called companions. Okay. And there's people in this museum and they're like clearing space in the museum so that they can sit down and like emulate this fucking sculpture 
and then take a picture of it so that they can put it on the gram. Mm. But when I'm looking at you do it, I'm like, bro, you this is not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> like you look so terrible right now. Have you ever oh. seen that artwork where they, they there was someone who uh, removed Photoshop photos out of people's hands mm -hmm. in scenarios mm -hmm. like that? Oh, so yeah. you, if you have the couple lying in bed next to each other, but like they then you take the phone out. You just look like you're staring at your, you're a crazy person. You're, yeah. you're, you're yeah. staring at your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and same thing. If you were to remove the phones from that scenario, mm. yeah. those people would look insane. Yeah, if yeah. I filmed it from my point of view, <laughs> oh my God, you'd be looking so lame. Like, people would be like, bro, you really went over there. You bought a ticket to do this. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Like, yeah. Or when I'm just in a place and I see that people are like taking the most like basic photo op. I guess like like that pink wall. I didn't understand that before Nick took me over there, but then I realized places like that are all over LA. Those uh those things with the wings on the wall. Mm -hmm. Hey, when I see people trying to do that, like <laughs> I'm like, dude, stop. Yeah. Please. Like, stop taking pictures. It's become so cliche. Things. Well, it's interesting. Wow. It's interesting because yeah. the pink wall. Yeah, tell you, me about it because it's right down the street from here. Yeah. And, and, Every, what it's a pink wall why and I, every time i go by it there are 17 people taking photos in front of it yeah. 17 is a low number for yeah, the pink wall a uh slow that's day. a slow day <laughs> uh, um it's one of the, it's so the there's a the paul smith store in la is uh is a big pink rectangle of a, a building that they painted bright pink and they did it not not be not for social media but they did it because they thought it would look cool and it's kind of like you know a paul smith thing to do yeah and it has become uh, at one point the number one tourist destination in los angeles wow a flat pink wall and <laughs> yeah. and what's really interesting is if you notice when you drive around la now there are dozens of pink stores and there's a, a, a sneaker store on melrose that painted themselves pink oh yeah there's a target mm -hmm. uh, a place next to the target down on beverly that painted itself pink there's a donut store oh, over yeah. on highland like all these stores have now painted themselves pink with the hope that people come to take a picture and then buy a donut or some sneakers wow. or something mm -hmm. like that and it's um it's crazy it's just it's i mean when we we went to film there for the opening of the film there's this like fun sequence where we shot and on a slow motion camera, uh, people it's taking so selfies and jumping and so on and so forth. Yeah, and uh, and we would like, we had to get releases from everyone for it. And people would be, I mean, there were, there was these women that had come from England for an Instagram vacation where they get driven around to all these different places to take selfies. There were, there was a, a guy so who wait, had driven up two hours. That? Yeah, yeah. Instagram it's a, vacation. An Instagram vacation. It's $2,000 wow. or something like that. They put you up in like a, a, condo in glendale because you don't know the difference and then they drive you around for a week to like the pier and the pink wall and the wings that chris has mentioned and like you take a bunch of pictures and that's it and wow. uh, there was a guy that we came that came a young kid 14 years old who had driven from like four hours away just to like come with his parents to come take a picture it's like it's crazy yeah. yeah it's totally crazy it is we have another question here from justin in college station texas how do you involve minimalism and mindfulness at work? This is something that I am trying to deal with, and I'm just curious how you incorporate those things while you're at work. All right, so Justin is a social media manager, and, and really, I mean, this is something that's difficult because as part of your work, for both of you, you are required, not required, but you feel as though you're required to be on social media to some extent. And so it's always about finding that balance of misery and, and, and contentment, That's right? Way of putting it. Mm -hmm. So, so how, Chris, how has that manifested in your life where you, you, you feel as though you're compelled to post something as part of your business, but also it's might be driving you crazy at the same time. Um, yeah. So recently this started to become a thing for me, uh, basically what you guys are talking about and my friend, who she be like, uh, she like, she be hanging out with like these Instagram influencer chicks and doing all the pictures and, and doing all the, making these girls look cool, basically. And uh, so she's always, she's known me for like years. And she's like, oh, you would be just big on this. You would be, you would blow up on TikTok. You would do this. You, you could do that. And I'm like, then do it. <laughs> do it for me then you feel me because like mm -hmm. i am i'm just this way uh -huh. 
I'm not trying to be this way. So it's very difficult for me to like try to catch everything on this phone yeah. and then like post it and feel like, okay, like, yeah, now I've done my part for showing. But when you get your, so when you get your light phone, do you imagine that you'll have your Instagram to post your, your, your fashion and then you'll kind of just put that phone away at night so, and just have the light phone or how, how do yeah, you? Yeah. So actually I'm trying to find somebody who's going to do that stuff for me because I'm, my job is just to make art. That's it. And I'm not doing anything else. And that's the way it's going to be. So I love it. I don't need to do that. Like I will pay you. That's fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way that I feel. I, I'm, I've been able to spend more time working on things that are actually worth looking at through a screen. You mm. know what I'm saying? And so now I'm like, <clears throat> this is pretty much what I care that people see. Like everything else, I'm like, whatever, you know? My friends are always taking photos of me and we're all, it's thousands of pictures of me around in mm. my phone. But like, I don't feel like I need to post all the time because. As soon as you post, then you're on the phone. You're right. You'll right. be on the phone for 30 more minutes. So. It sucks you right into it. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to trying to not. I think this do is it something that ev everyone struggles with. You know, everyone yes. goes through this experience mm -hmm. of yeah. they, you know, and you get to a point the 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 end point of it is when you delete the app from your phone and then you're in it's almost like, you know, quitting drinking and then you're you're like i think i can have a drink and <laughs> you download it again and you're like oh yeah i can do this for like five minutes a day and next mm -hmm. thing you know you look at your you're phone wasted. stats and you're like and the thing that's so frustrating for me is i as i love reading books and i write books and i love reading novels and i could we, i could sit here and talk for days about my favorite books and writers and this that and the other and when i think back on the 15 years i've wasted on social media Mm -hmm. I can't tell you anything that had an impact on my life. Wow. Nothing. It has wow. just been a complete and utter fucking wash. See, I'm yeah. I'm somewhere in between. I agree with you. I think fundamentally I agree with you, but I've connected with so many people via social media, but it always everything that has been meaningful from it has extended beyond social media. Yeah, it's you can, I mean, look, I've connected with people absolutely and and made friends and so on and so forth, but I don't do that anymore. Mm. I, I don't require that to meet people anymore. I meet people out and about. And I think that the, what's been interesting to me post pandemic is, um, I, and maybe this, maybe it'll be a reset and we'll just go back to all staring down on our phones. But the times that I've been out socially to like dinner parties or parties or whatever, I, the, the, there are almost no one is staring at their phone like they used to. They're more talking to each other mm -hmm. in a way that we used to before phones were the, the center of, of our lives. And I think, I think like we spent some, we spent a year and a half being stuck inside staring at a device that we are like now saying, okay, like I don't want to fucking look at that thing. You right. Know? Everyone I know is going through that. Everyone yeah, yeah. I know is trying to get their screen time down and, and, you know, and leave their phone downstairs when they go to bed and all these different things. Yeah. This term Zoom fatigue, I've heard, but social media fatigue, it's a real thing. Yeah. Did it burn you out during the whole process of this? Because they were le they were heaping fake followers and likes and all this stuff on you. I could tell there was a frustration in you, Chris. Um, Like, I don't know. I don't know that I was like really that frustrated as much as I was like, I thought it was like very like funny. <laughs> you, did, you did get frustrated that you couldn't tell who was liking your yeah. stuff anymore or leaving comments. Mm -hmm. You were yeah, like, Yeah, I couldn't tell who was actually paying attention to what I was doing versus just like the the illusion that was being created. Right. So it was uh yeah, parts of it were frustrating, but like more than anything, I was just like I was entertained by it for a little while. You know, I was like, okay, this is like different you mm -hmm. know my phone's just going crazy all the time and anytime i get on instagram it's like hundreds of notifications and i'm like it's cool until you understand that it's not real and yeah like ain't nobody trying to talk to me all right you know what i'm saying like <laughs> so yeah like that was i think that was the that's the frustrating part is when you come back to reality and you realize like this ain't uh, changing anything in my actual life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so like in the whole process leading up to when the documentary came out, like nothing changed. Right. You know, like 
I think maybe one person asked me something about it, you know, and I was just like, yeah, you'll see, you know, uh-huh. you'll see what it's about. Right. And uh, that was it. But for you know? but that was for Dominique, who was the other woman on the in the film, like everything changed. Everything changed. But mm-hmm. she's been on the cover of magazines. Mm-hmm. She's got like sponsorship deals now. She was a she worked on the floor at Lululemon and is now an influencer for Lululemon. Like wow. it's like, you know. It, so I don't know. It's like I guess for certain people it works and certain people it doesn't. But I think that you know I think at the end of the day, the the whole point of social media is to deliver ads to you. That is it. There's yeah. nothing else beyond that. I right. don't care how many times Mark Zuckerberg says he wants to connect people. <laughs> it's full of shit. <laughs> it's all about advertising yeah. and and I think and you you use it for free because you are giving them your data to serve up those ads. And, uh, and I just, I think, I don't know. I'm at the point where for me, it's like, it's 40, 51% worse and 49% better. And that means it might even be higher than that. It's, yeah. it's definitely higher. Yeah. Than right. It's yeah. definitely higher than that. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause in the documentary you talked about, you know, the, what the reality was of social media, but how, uh, it's convenient for, it not to come to light because a lot of it's dependent on this fakeness. It's a lot of it is dependent on, um, yeah, people projecting it, them fake selves and yeah, it's all, it's all a number. What's it, what's been interesting for me is like for, through my career is I remember in the beginning of Twitter, like your goal was like, I got to get more followers so I can get more people to read my articles and buy more books and so on and so forth. And now I just could give two shits. Like I literally, <laughs> I went on clubhouse twice and I don't even, I, I w- like literally was like, no, nah, not interested. Like yeah. I, I, I have thousands of followers in there. I just do not give a shit. So, yeah. Yeah. Like oh Snapchat. I remember like just being into it for five minutes and then being like, what the fuck is the point of this? And then like, <laughs> I do like snap. I think it's one of the best of social media platforms and doesn't get enough credit huh. because um, Evan Spiegel is really tries to not make it about, addiction like he really puts an effort forth to make it like when he sees an, an aspect of the platform where people are getting addicted he they kill that okay which is really cool um and uh and it's like he's trying to create this place that's like safe for kids um uh but the other ones they're just yeah you know, and tiktok is this whole other world oh god as a 40 year old man going on tiktok it's like uh oh <laughs> slowly back out I of mean, this there are, room there is yeah. some creative stuff happening on there with dance and so yeah. on and so forth yeah but, but I, it is. I believe that and i'm sure there are artistic ways to use it effectively but also well, i think chris touched on a good point here we all now feel compelled and people are now telling us this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed, supposed to use to. that. Mm. In fact, I do want to talk about children. We got a lightning round question I'm going to save for the maximal because first we need to get some, to some of these listener comments and tips. Check them out. Hi, this is Katie from outside Philadelphia. I'm calling in reference to episode, I believe, 176 where you talked to Colin Wright about uh, the un-American dream and I believe it was Ryan who was saying he eventually wants to build a house that's totally off the grid. And I believe this information would be useful for him and any of your listeners who are interested in the same thing. There is an um, organization called Earthship Biotexture, and it is headquartered in Arizona, but there is sections across the United States And they specialize in building houses made out of recycled materials such as tires and plastic bottles. And they are all totally off the grid and environmentally friendly. Hey guys, this is Rachel calling from Newport Beach, California. I was calling in with a tip for how to responsibly invest in purchasing a home without being tied down to a particular city. This has been a concern multiple callers have discussed recently, and I wanted to share a solution that has worked really well for my husband and I. In Southern California, many homes are at least a million dollars, which would make it really easy to get in over your head or not purchase homes using the Dave Ramsey guidelines for a sensible down payment. What we have chosen to do instead is utilize an investment company to purchase homes out of state in affordable markets that have been vetted with a reliable company. By purchasing rental properties in different states, and ensuring we put down a large percentage, we have built a lot of equity and cash flow through the years. 
This is an excellent solution for anyone like myself who lives in an unaffordable housing market but still wants to purchase real estate responsibly. The company we've used to purchase our three properties over the past decade is Marshall Reddick Real Estate. They have been an amazing resource to us and are totally honest, offering a ton of free education and training in their website. There are also other companies out there that do the same thing. For us, this is how we've been able to invest in our family's financial future without making irrational decisions purchasing a home in an overpriced market. Instead of being a slave to a mortgage we can't justify or feeling stuck in a certain place, we personally rent and let our home ownership out of state pay for itself with tenant rents. I hope this tip helps some of your callers as it's helped us. All right, y'all. Big thanks to Nick and Chris for joining us today. They're going to join us a bunch more over on the Minimalist Private Podcast this week, patreon.com slash the minimalist. But real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalist. Ryan, we it's have time. We have a new book coming out next week, a, a week from today. Heck yeah. Love people, use things because the opposite never works. Yeah. Jay Shetty said, the minimalists show you how to disconnect from our conditioned material state and reconnect to our true essence. Mm. Love people and use things. This is not a book about how to live with less, but about how to live more deeply and more fully. Heck yeah. Now you and I are going to do a tour stop for anyone who pre-orders the book you get to attend our free virtual tour stop yes. now eventually in the in the fall and the winter we're going to do some physical tour stops mm -hmm. but right now we're doing a worldwide event yes we're going to come into your house like santa claus all in one night yeah you could uh join us in your living room <laughs> yes indeed the minimalists.com slash tour you can find all the details there if you pre-order the book all you have to do is upload a receipt from wherever you got it whether it was your local bookstore or amazon just snap a photo of it upload it there free tour stop we're gonna have erwin Raphael mcmanus with us that's on july 13th at 7 p.m eastern if you can't attend the live event don't worry it will be posted for at least 48 hours afterwards so you can go back and watch it at your leisure mm. for our added value segment this week ryan we gotta we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about chris bailey who we were just speaking with we're going to talk to him a lot more about his side project here it's called the one-off recycled garment project well you know what's funny is like we don't typically uh you know propagate clothes right like we don't we don't say hey buy this clothing brand or, or check out this clothing company mm -hmm. but yeah I, th I think this is the first time we've ever done something like this but really it's not a clothing company i mean right. this this is an art project exactly and it's beautiful yeah, it's called Last One Left. The website is oneoffproject.com. That's the numeral one, oneoffproject.com. It's also one off project on Instagram, social media, et cetera, if you want to see what he is up to. But it it is literally, it's recycled clothes. So it's one-off recycled garments, but then he does his own artistic spin with it. He's not a fashion designer. He's an artist whose medium happens to be clothing. Yeah. And he puts together some of the most fascinating. I mean, you even saw what he was wearing today if you're watching the video on YouTube. But you can take a look at what he is doing. And these are all one of one pieces. Talk about artwork. Yeah. A work of art. Oneoffproject.com. By the way, we have a bunch more surprise questions this week. Like... What moral responsibilities do social media platforms bear for the damage they're inflicting on the young and the impressionable? Do successful influencers ever experience a feeling of contentment? Or are they always chasing? Are they always on the hunt for the next best thing? In what ways is social media contributing to the objectification of women? How can we use technology without it draining our attention. Plus a million more questions about craving, achieving, creativity, and much more with Nick and Chris. And if you want to hear all that, join us on The Minimalist Private Podcast this week. Visit patreon.com slash The Minimalist to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. You're not just getting our private podcast. I mean, you are, but you're also joining a community over there. So what we're really asking you to do is join our community. You can interact with people who are also supporters of the podcast. You keep this podcast 100% advertisement free, but you can also comment. And also there's an entire community section over there on Patreon where you can interact with all of our other Patreon supporters, the true fans, the VIPs, the private podcast supporters all over there. Patreon.com slash 
The Minimalist. You can comment on this episode at youtube.com slash The Minimalist. If you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list over at theminimalists.com. You'll also receive our simple Sunday writings for free. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. And if you leave here today with just one message, let it be this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing that's just feeding your greed. Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it.